Hello and welcome to the last video in this four-part series considering from foreign lands and people from Robert Schumann's Kindersehne, Opus 15. In the previous three videos we've looked a little at historical background, we've considered the harmony and the structure of the piece and then in the last video I was waking up your ears and getting you to see if you could play certain parts of it by ear. So in this final video I'm going to consider a little bit the style of, of how to perform this, how to learn it, how to play it. And this is obviously the first piece of a set of pieces and I would really recommend that you go in and explore all the pieces, especially the ones that follow this because they all add to the big picture. They were composed as a set of pieces. At the very least, go and listen to it. So I found this short, this small book, actually um, put together by Steve, the cellist Stephen Isselis, Robert Schumann's Advice to Young Musicians. And it's got some lovely, lovely things in it. And one of the things it says, that Robert Schumann did, said, was endeavour to play easy pieces well and beautifully. That is better than playing difficult pieces badly. And I think that is very much the case with this piece. It's not hard, it's probably a late intermediate, um, probably, I, I think actually at the moment it's set on the grade six um, alternative list for uh, ABRSM yet it has real hidden depths and if you can actually explore those and play it really beautifully then you will actually have learned so much yeah? so playing the piano isn't all about being flashy all over the, the keyboard the other thing he says is um, play always as if in the presence of a master and Stephen Isselius has gone on and said well, how would practicing in the presence of a master affect our work? Would your concentration, uh, your attention go wandering off, or would you be fully focused? I suspect when you're in the presence of a master, or even if you are having lessons at the moment, during that time you are fully focused. So if we can get ourselves into that same state every time we practice, then how much better it will feel for ourselves and how much quicker we will actually achieve what we want. So in terms of the interpretation of this piece, by the time you've looked at the melody, the bass line, the harmony, the way that the inner part bubbles along, by the time you know the structure, by the time you've looked at the, the chords that are going on, you know quite a lot about this piece. And actually, I think it's like having um, a, set of, a set of materials, if you like, in front of you. You've got all the materials here, and every time you come to it, you will probably play it slightly differently. That's what I encourage all my students to do. There isn't a set um, performance that, or interpretation that I would be wanting from them from any piece of music. All I want them to do is be creative in the moment with what they know works, okay? We're not saying you can't be, you shouldn't be stylish, of course you should, but be creative in the moment. So um, some days I might play this faster than others. Um, there is also uh, this big debate really about Schumann and his metronome and Clara's done her um, metronome marks as well. 108 is the mark that is here. Um, actually, I play it a little bit so slower, I quite a bit slower actually. Um, I go at about 76, but I will vary within that. You know, I can sometimes just enjoy playing it, especially if I'm doing it as a standalone piece. I will indulge a little, I must admit. Or I might go slightly faster. Depends on the weather, maybe. Within the moment of creation, 
play as though you are playing to Schumann. I do like that idea very much indeed. Have an ear, have an ear for the layers of the piece. And this is something to be really careful of. What you're wanting to avoid is this. because we could hear that inner line, especially that, that lovely thumb that we have, which is so versatile, but it can really get carried away. So do be careful with that. Um, that inner line will require quite a bit of practice to just play just the right amount of energy. Of course, you don't need to go all the way down on the keys with those. If they, you just need to reach that point of sound. A waste. You don't want that. Of course, in the moment of play, sometimes things don't quite go according to plan. Usually, they don't go according to plan. But if you've messed around with the materials, then you actually have a, a strategy for the problems when they do arise. What, of course, you do want is that lovely melody soaring up there, Clara's theme, remember? Clara's motto. And that descending little skipping idea there all to do with memory, it's all to do with remembering times gone past. So although this is called Kindersehnen, actually it's about adults remembering childhood and this is his remembering theme motto as well as being Clara. I think we can all remember our childhood um, and it, it feels hopefully quite warm and fuzzy, certainly some bits of it. So we've got um, uh, that melody, a lovely inner line, and then I love the shadow that that bass line that takes us to that diminished seventh, remember? And um, I like to really listen to my bass line. I will focus on my bass line. This will look after itself, this right hand, but if I can focus really hard on listening to that bass line, then I find the whole jigsaw of the performance falls into place. I've got written down on my on my uh, music here, right ear. I need to listen with my right ear. Okay, let's have a go. thumb notes and I thought about Robert Schumann at one point in it so lots of lots of ideas going on in my head there. The final thing I want to say about this we've talked about the tempo um, of course there, there is a relaxed feel to it rubato he has written in some rubato especially in the middle section there, there's a ritardando which lasts for the three bars but you do want to let the music breathe in other places, just going from the, the second beat, uh, from the first beat to the second beat to the third beat, if nothing else. And I've mentioned in one of the other videos how the music opens up, it expands. Well, we need to expand as well to go along with it. Well, I do hope you found those four videos both useful and interesting. I hope you go and find this piece if you haven't yet discovered it and go and fall in love with it because it's really well worth falling in love with. Thank you so much for watching. Bye bye.